Psalm 3, as expounded by Matthew Henry, offers a profound meditation on the security and peace that the redeemed experience under God's protection, even amid severe trials. This psalm captures a moment of great personal crisis for David, who is forced to flee from his palace, the royal city, and the sacred city of Jerusalem, due to the rebellion of his son Absalom. Despite the gravity of his situation, David's response unfolds in several stages, each reflecting a great and abiding faith in God's sovereignty. Initially, David laments the overwhelming number of his enemies, expressing his distress to God in a candid and heartfelt manner, verses 1, 2. The situation appears dire, with many rising against him and doubting God's deliverance. Yet rather than succumbing to despair, David quickly shifts his focus, reaffirming his trust in God as his shield and protector, verse 3. This declaration of faith is not abstract, but deeply personal, as David recalls the many times God has answered his prayers and provided for him in the past, verses 4, 5. Buoyed by these memories of divine faithfulness, David triumphs over his fears, confidently emphasizing that he will not be afraid, even though surrounded by countless enemies, verse 6. His faith empowers him to rise above the immediate danger and petition God for deliverance, boldly asking for divine intervention against his adversaries, verse 7. In the conclusion of the psalm, David turns his focus to God's overarching sovereignty, acknowledging that salvation belongs to the Lord and that his blessing is upon his people, verse 8. Henry accentuates that David's experiential understanding of God's power and goodness enables him to speak with authority about the peace and security that the godly can claim, even in the midst of their most challenging circumstances. Also, Henry sheds light on the psalm's context, written during David's flight from his son Absalom, who had conspired against him to seize the throne and take his life. This background is crucial for discerning the depth of David's emotions and the faith expressed in the psalm. Despite the intense grief David experienced, evident as he wept on the Mount of Olives with his head covered and feet bare, he composed this psalm, blending his tears with prayer and song. This demonstrates his ability to maintain joy in God even in the midst of profound sorrow. David's situation was perilous. The conspiracy against him was formidable, led by his own son. Yet rather than succumb to despair, David clung to his faith in God. Henry affirms that such dangers should drive us toward God rather than away from Him. Betrayed by those he had trusted, his son and his subjects, David could have easily been consumed by resentment. However, he maintained a composed spirit, which allowed the Holy Spirit to work through him, demonstrating that peace and calmness are vital for true spiritual devotion. Moreover, Henry asserts that David's suffering was partly a consequence of his sin with Uriah, as foretold by God. This awareness did not cause David to lose faith. Instead, he renewed his repentance and continued to trust in God's goodness and strength. Even in sorrow and repentance, David's joy in God remained undiminished. Furthermore, while David's retreat from Absalom might seem cowardly, Henry argues that true Christian courage lies not in physical confrontation, but in a serene and secure mind, patiently waiting for God's deliverance. Psalm 3, therefore, becomes a strong tribute to faith, trust, and spiritual resilience in the face of overwhelming adversity. In addition, Henry delves into the anguish David experiences during his flight from Absalom, his son. Despite being away from his usual places of prayer and worship, David instinctively turns to God in his time of need, demonstrating the ever-accessible nature of divine presence. Henry highlights that David, rather than seeking counsel from his advisors, chooses to present his distress directly to God, indicating his rich reliance on divine intervention over human wisdom. David's lament begins with the overwhelming increase in the number of his enemies, Henry notes David's astonishment at how quickly the allegiance of the people shifted, echoing the inherent fickleness and deceitfulness of human nature. David had previously enjoyed widespread loyalty and affection, but this had rapidly turned into a formidable opposition, much like the experience of Christ, who faced betrayal and hostility from those who once followed him. Henry suggests that this teaches the lesson of not placing too much trust in human support, as it is prone to sudden and surprising failure. Further, David's enemies do not merely seek to harm him physically, they attack his spiritual assurance, claiming that even God cannot save him. 
This blasphemous accusation is particularly grievous to David, as it not only misinterprets his suffering, but also attempts to undermine his unshakable faith in God's salvation. Henry draws a parallel to Job, whose friends similarly believed that his suffering signified divine abandonment. For David, these taunts are a severe trial of faith, as they strike at the core of his trust in God. The use of Selah in the psalm, Henry explains, is a call for readers to pause and cogitate acutely on the gravity of these accusations, urging them to reaffirm their trust in God's unfailing force and salvation. Besides, Henry focuses on the serious trust that David places in God, especially when faced with adversity. When David's enemies claim that God has abandoned him, his response is not despair, but a deepened reliance on God. Henry maintains that true believers, when confronted with difficulties, will hold even more firmly to their faith. David exemplifies this by declaring God as his shield, protecting him on all sides. This imagery of God as a shield represents not only divine protection, but also a present, active safety that David experiences in his time of need. Additionally, Henry explores how David views God as his source of honor. Even though David is in disgrace, having lost his crown and facing the scorn of his enemies, he finds his true dignity in God. Henry notes that those who are owned by God are not only safe, but also possess a glory that surpasses any worldly honor. David's sense of self-worth is not diminished by his situations, because he sees God as his glory, far surpassing the fleeting honors of earthly power. Also, Henry considers God as the lifter-up of David's head, a metaphor for restoring joy and dignity. Despite his troubles, David is certain that God will lift him out of his current state, whether by restoring his former position or by giving him the inner strength to maintain his joy in adversity. This belief allows David and all believers to find encouragement in God, knowing that eventually everything will work for their good. Henry advises that when praying or singing Psalm 3, believers should recognize the spiritual dangers they face and the threats against the church. Yet in these struggles, they should find comfort in the unwavering protection and ultimate honor that God brings. Moreover, Henry dives into King David's abiding trust in God during times of severe adversity. Faced with overwhelming challenges and surrounded by enemies, David chooses to lift his eyes toward God rather than be consumed by the discouragement around him. This psalm serves as a testament to David's faith, pointing out his retrospective gratitude for God's past faithfulness and his hopeful anticipation of divine deliverance in the future. David recalls with comfort the numerous instances where his communion with God equipped him with strength, especially during moments of thorough difficulty and oppression. Each trial drove him to prayer, reinforcing the essential role that sincere and fervent prayer plays in the life of a believer. Henry reiterates that David's troubles consistently brought him to his knees, turning his grief into earnest cries to God. This act of prayer, rooted in a fervent heart, is seen as intensely important as it mirrors a genuine dependence on God. Even though God can figure out the silent prayers of the heart, the earnest cry of a troubled soul is specifically noted by him. Furthermore, Henry elaborates on David's firm belief that God was always ready to answer his prayers. Despite physical distances, such as when David was fleeing from Absalom and was away from the ark of God's presence, he remained sure that his prayers reached God's holy hill of Mount Zion. This assurance stems from David's comprehension that God's grace is not confined by geography, and that divine communication is facilitated through the promises of the covenant. Henry repeats that these promises are basically fulfilled in Christ, the King upon Zion, through whom all prayers are heard and answered, reinforcing the enduring bond between God's grace and human faith. In addition, Henry digs into the strong trust and reliance that David places in God's protection, even during times of extreme danger and betrayal. David, despite being surrounded by enemies and facing the rebellion of his son Absalom, finds a weighty peace that allows him to sleep soundly. Henry underlines this as a remarkable example of faith, underscoring that while many are unable to rest due to fear, anxiety, or physical discomfort, David's ability to sleep is a direct result of his determined trust in God's providence. This peace is not slightly a natural rest, but a divine tranquility that comes from committing one's life and struggles to God. Further, Henry draws an effective parallel between David's experience and the resurrection of Christ. 
just as David was sustained by God and awoke after rest, Christ, after his crucifixion, was resurrected on the third day, sustained by God, and not left to decay. This connection emphasizes the theme of God's sustaining strength, both in life and in death. Besides, Henry discusses how God has historically intervened to protect David from his enemies, breaking their power and rendering their attempts to harm him ineffective. This is symbolized by the imagery of God striking his enemies on the cheek and breaking their teeth, indicating a complete disarmament of their ability to cause harm. Henry stimulates believers to contemplate on these past acts of divine intervention, reminding them that God's force to protect and deliver remains as strong as ever. The commentary aids as a call to trust in God's lasting protection, recognizing that His providence is a constant source of safety and peace, even in the midst of life's greatest difficulties. Last but not least, Henry examines David's profound certainty in God amid severe threats. David, surrounded by ten thousand enemies, faces what appears to be an insurmountable challenge, yet he remains unshaken in his trust in God's protection. Henry contrasts this moment with an earlier instance during David's flight from Absalom, when he expressed uncertainty about the outcome of his troubles, resigning himself to whatever God deemed fit. However, in Psalm 3, David speaks with enduring determination, illustrating a transformation from doubt to steadfast faith. Henry notes that this shift is implanted in a cheerful resignation to God's will, which fosters vivid peace and courage in the face of adversity. Additionally, Henry accentuates the central role of prayer in this context. Even though David is assured of God's salvation, he still fervently prays, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. This reflects a significant principle. God's promises are not a reason to forego prayer, but rather a consolation to engage in it more earnestly. The act of praying for what God has promised shows trust and reliance on Him. Also, Henry affirms the triumphant nature of David's faith. The psalm begins with a lament over the strength of his enemies, but concludes with exultation in God's power and grace. David's confidence is grounded in two key truths. First, that salvation belongs to the Lord alone, who possesses the final authority and ability to save. And second, that God's blessing rests upon His people, securing them in His favor even when outward conditions suggest otherwise. Henry concludes by boosting believers to internalize and live out the psalm, promoting a steadfast hope in God's salvation and an intense assurance in His blessing, despite any present difficulties. In conclusion, Henry investigates the theme of divine protection and peace during life's most intense trials. This psalm, penned by David during his flight from his son Absalom's rebellion, echoes a deep moment of personal crisis. Despite being surrounded by enemies and facing betrayal, David's response is one of resolute faith in God's sovereignty. He begins by candidly expressing his distress over the sheer number of adversaries and the doubts cast on God's ability to deliver him. Verses 1, 2. However, David quickly shifts from lament to trust, affirming God as his shield, and recalling his past faithfulness. Verses 3, 5. This recollection enables David to rise above his fears and assuredly petition God for deliverance, asserting that he will not be afraid even if surrounded by countless foes. Verse 6. Moreover, Henry highlights the significance of the psalm's context, David's perilous flight from Absalom, marked by serious grief and danger. Despite these factors, David maintains his joy and faith in God, demonstrating spiritual resilience. Henry also notes that David's suffering was partly a consequence of his sin with Uriah. Yet instead of succumbing to despair, David develops his repentance and trust in God's goodness. Lastly, David's single-minded trust in God is indicated by his ability to sleep soundly, even when surrounded by enemies, which Henry interprets as a sign of divine tranquility born of faith. The psalm concludes with David recognizing that salvation belongs to the Lord and that his blessing is upon his people. Verse 8. Henry sees Psalm 3 as a capable testimony to the abiding faith and trust that believers should place in God, emboldening them to rely on his promises and find peace in his staunch protection.